If you want to become an expert at Google Ads in 2025, these are the four things that you need to focus on. And the first thing is, is that you need to understand that for true success with Google Ads, you don't only need to know how Google Ads works, but you also need to know how the business works. If you're running Google Ads for your own business, this is quite simple. You understand your business and you just need to learn how to understand Google Ads. But if you are working at an agency or you're a freelancer and you are managing Google Ads accounts for different clients, clients, in order to see real success with Google Ads, you don't only need to understand how Google Ads works, you also need to know the core drivers of their business. You don't need to know the ins and outs of everything to do with their business, but you do need to know about their suite of products and services, the different profit margins, the different locations they want to focus on. You also need to take into account different levels of seasonality and really just about their structure. And the reason for why this is so important is because different structures and different goals can be different for different businesses. Let me give you some examples. For a lead generation business that was offering some home services, this business had a franchise model. So it was really, really important for them that we broke their account into really specific geographic territories because each franchise owner was paying different budgets. So it was really, really important for them that we had that structure in place. Whereas for an individual owned company, if they were targeting the same area, it would probably make more sense to do a around services because some of the services had much better profit margins. But once again, when we looked at their business structure, that was the best structure for them. And let me give you another example when it comes to structure for another business, they had a whole heap of different product providers that would review and renew their contracts every quarter. So what that meant was is that every quarter they could have different brands that were more profitable for them. So in that case, what we did is we created campaigns around strong keyword themes and had their ad groups based around different brands. That way we could pause or we could turn off different brands when we needed to while still having that keyword focus strong throughout that campaign. You may have other cases as well where you may have a product that has a really, really high profit margin, but a really low traffic volume. And if you can really drill down with that client and find out that that is a core product for them, even though it may have a really low traffic volume, it makes sense to move it into a separate campaign so that you can control and scale the spend for that product. So what I'm really looking at here is that there are so many different types of variations. As the Google Ads professional, what you really need to start drilling down on is really having a set of questions to the business owner and asking them, you know, what are your most important products or services? Are there any factors around locations that we need to take into account? Are there any factors around profit volumes that we need to take into account? These are all the important questions that a true Google Ads professional will ask. Remember that first part of becoming an expert in Google Ads is not only understanding how Google Ads works, but also understand how the business works. So if you wanna excel in Google Ads in 2025, make sure that your first step before you get into any account structures, before you get into setting up any campaigns for your client, that you're asking questions about the business so that you can find out how the business works so that you can then set the best strategy for them. All right, number two. This one is Google Ads specific. And what I'm talking about here is you wanna understand all of the different types of Google Ads campaigns and how they work. Right now, as we speak, there are 10 different types of Google Ads campaigns that you could use. But realistically, there's six core ones that people will be using in 2025. And that is search, shopping, performance max, demand gen, video, and also display campaigns. And what you really wanna know is you really wanna know the best case uses of each of these types of campaigns. And the reason for that is because when you know how those campaigns work and how they work the best, you can then put together the best strategy. Because unfortunately with Google support at the moment, they'll be pushing for you to run Performance Max and Demand Gen as everything and that they are the one and all problem solver for any business. Now, let me be clear. I do like Performance Max as a campaign and I do use Demand Gen, but I don't use them the way that a Google rep would tell me to use them. So what I would really be saying there is really get to the core of how these campaigns are built and how they are structured. Let me give you a perfect example. For Performance Max, if you go to the Google Ads help page and read up about Performance Max, they make it very, very clear that Performance Max is a campaign that looks to drive more conversions and that it uses your account conversion data. So for me, straight away, you would not be using a Performance Max campaign until you've already got an account that has some core data in it. Unfortunately, Google will recommend for you to start with a Performance Max campaign. 
So that's where I'm kind of saying is you really need to understand how these campaigns work so that you can then use them in the best case scenarios. While we're talking about this topic, let's jump into a screen share so I can give you a really, really quick breakdown of this. So what I've got over on this side is we've got the different types of campaigns. So search, shopping, performance, max, display, video and demand gen. And I've really just broken it out into some different cases where I would use these campaigns. So let's start at the bottom when it looks, when we're talking about remarketing. For me, I'm really using a display or a shopping campaign. With both of those campaigns, I'm then using targeted audiences. You can also use a search campaign as remarketing only. I'm not saying that you can't do that, but that's the main cases that I use them. When we're talking through our bottom of the funnel, for me, that's really our search, our call only campaigns and our shopping campaign. For our middle of the funnel, that's where I start to use Performance Max. Remembering that the reason why I've got Performance Max there is that for me, the way that I set a Performance Max campaign is that I'm setting it as a secondary campaign. So I've already got converting search and or search and shopping campaigns. I'm then getting it to only bid on new customers and taking out those brand exclusions. And the reason for that is because for me, I found far better results when we're using Performance Max to generate more conversions. But I'm using this bottom of the funnel, my search and shopping, for my high intent keywords. And then you can continue to go up with video demand gen and display. So that's just an example of how I would go through and how I view each of these types of campaigns. All right, number three, and this is the third thing that I want you to focus on if you wanna become an expert at Google Ads in 2025. And that is don't just learn what the different metrics inside of Google Ads mean, learn what that data is telling you. And what I mean by that is that like any industry or any platform, Google has a lot of its own three letter acronyms. Acronyms, you know, things like your click through ratios. Then you also need to know things like search impression share, your conversion rates, your quick conversion values via cost. The list is endless. And a lot of people can explain what those metrics mean. They can give the definition of what those metrics, but that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is looking at that when you see, say, for an example, a click through ratio of 5%, understanding what that data is telling you and then what you need to optimize. And to really get as practical as possible, I'm just going to show you four metrics, we're gonna jump into a screen share and really show you how I view them and when I see this data, what that means. And what we're really gonna be focusing on is your click-through ratio, which is how many times people click on your ad versus how many times people see your ad. Then we're also gonna talk about your conversion rates, which is quite simply how many people click on your ad versus how many convert, so whether they buy your product or complete a lead generation. We're gonna look at your CPC, which is your cost per click, and then finally your impression share. So let's jump into a real life account so I can really walk you through this. All right, so what we're looking at here is, this one is an e-commerce brand, but whether you are focusing on e-commerce or lead gen, you will be able to get some great data out of this. And you can see we took this on in, this was a coaching client we took on, we took the one in, in June, and what we're able to do is that we were able to scale up their account. Now, they did have a goal of hitting 200%, which we did get. And as you can see, we're overperforming. That's not really what I want you to focus on because just what I want you to focus on here is you can see how we're able to really scale up the performance of this account over a seven month period. What I want to do is I now want to break down to some different components of what we were looking at. So what I want to show you in through here, let's just go through and look at the results in July. And you can see in July, we hadn't started a performance max campaign, we're still very much focused on search and shopping. And you can see from here, we had our search where it had a click through ratio of 3.63 and a conversion rate of six. Now, what this data was telling us is that we knew that we had a high converting landing page, our product was priced right, but that we needed to work more on our ad copies. And the reason for why we knew that is that we had a good conversion rate. We had a conversion rate of above 6%, but our click through ratio was really, really low. Now for our click through ratio, we need that to be above 7%. What we then did is we knew that while we always wanted to be focusing more on our further split testing of landing pages, the biggest priority was increasing our click-through ratio. So increasing our ad re relevancy. So what we really went through and had a look at is that we went through and had a look at our ad copies. When we're looking at our shopping campaign, same thing as well is that we were okay with our conversion rate. We knew it could be a lot higher, but our click-through ratio was okay. So for this one, we knew that we'd already done some work on our product titles. Our product titles were probably okay, but what we needed to really work on is some of the targeting in and around our standard shopping. And now what I wanna show you is that when we looked at the last 30 days, you can see how these metrics have jumped. For the search campaign, we took that conversion rate from a 6% up to a 9%. Standard shopping has gone from 1% up to 12. And when we're looking at our click-through ratio, 
With the standard shopping, it did drop a little bit. Obviously, we want to work on that a little bit more. But remember, our focus was really hitting on that conversion rate. And for our search campaign, we moved that click to ratio from a three up to a six. So we've still got some more work to do there. But as you can see, as we're progressing along, we are really focusing in the right areas. Click to ratio, focus on your ad copy. Conversion rates, focus on your landing pages and your offer. Now, the other thing that I do want to show you in through here as well is another metric when we mentioned before, which was our search impression share. So let me just go back to through to July again. Now, the reason for why I knew we were able to scale this account is because in the search campaign, we had a search impression share of under 10%. So we knew that as long as we were happy with this conversion rate, which we did work on for a couple of months, but we were then able to scale that through. And you can see from here is that we've still got a search impression share of under 10%. So what that's really letting us know is that we've got more and more traffic that we can go out and target and we can easily scale just by increasing the ad spend. So what I wanna encourage you at that point, when it comes to looking at metrics like your click-through ratio, your conversion rate, your search impression share, I don't want you to only look at the definition of what that data means I want you to really get to have a core understanding of what that data is telling you. And the way that I look at it is, as I mentioned before, if we know we've got a low click-through ratio, we need to work on the ad copy. If we know we've got a low conversion rate, we need to go through and have a look at their landing page and their offer. Look at the different metrics and really when you're looking at it, when you see the data metrics, have a really clear idea of that's what I need to optimize. And the reason for why that is such a powerful thing is because when you understand the relationship between the metrics and what optimization actions you need to focus on, you can really, really quickly go through, look at an account, and really diagnose what are the problems with that account and what you need to focus on and what areas you can improve performance. And then this brings us to the fourth and final thing you need to focus on to become an expert at Google Ads in 2025, and that is have a clear optimization strategy. Especially when you're learning Google Ads, it can be quite confusing. You jump into your Google Ads dashboard and you just, you know, you're kind of wondering what do you need to optimize today? And that's the reason for why I put together my Google Ads optimization checklist. So it breaks down and gives you not only all of the different optimization actions you need to complete, it also lets you know when you need to complete them. And if you want to get free access to that optimization checklist, all you need to do is to follow that link in the description below. Thank you for joining me. It's been an absolute pleasure having you here. My name is Aaron Young from Define Digital Academy. And if you want to continue on your learning journey with Google Ads, I've actually put together this playlist, which is called Get Google Ready for 2025. And that takes you through not only how Google Ads works, how to do different ad copy, keyword research. It also lets you know how to set up all of the campaigns, how to optimize them, and it even takes you through how to do bidding strategies. So if you want to learn everything that you need to know for Google Ads in 2025, jump through and watch this playlist right here. See you next time.